Hi guys, Keith Darkberg Farms. It is uh, second week of April. We made it through the windstorm. Primarily everything's pretty much intact. Um, I had a lot of stuff blown all over the place. All my tarps, all the cover that wasn't down. Uh, just everything is a mess. I'm really wondering why I use some of this stuff sometimes, but it's besides the point. Today, I'm gonna take you over and show off my new prop house here which is right in front of me here because I finally got it up and finished. So let me take you on a tour and kind of show you what I did here. So this is the location of see the first greenhouse I built or the second might have been the second because I think I got that one first the big giant high tunnel and then I put up one here there's an a-frame built out of carport connectors um, I think I did a video on at least showing off what it was but anyways it was collapsing I'm gonna look for a picture and put it in right here so it was in pretty tough shape uh, a lot of the poles had broken, which I've got some of them here behind me because I had to completely take it apart. They were just junk poles I got. They're real thin gauge metal, so it didn't really stand up that well. So what I did is I got a bunch of extra Caterpillar tunnel hoops. I can bend them on my own. I do have a bender to do it, but I had the pre-made ones. So I put those together, put it up, put a frame on the front of it, which we'll go inside and look at. Pretty simple setup. Already had the door. Um, just two by four baseboard across the bottom, two by four up, all the way up to the top. And then I've got brace bands you hook on right there. Um, let me get a little closer. Get a look at that. So it's just got a lag bolt going through. I just notched out for it. Down at the bottom, same thing. I just notch this two by four around this one. And then I took extra pieces of one and three eighths top rail drove them down the ground quite a ways and then put a couple screws to hold that door in place same thing over here and I also have added an exhaust fan came with a little controller I got that on Amazon not sure it's quite big enough but at least for right now it should hopefully do what I want to do with it um, from here we'll go over to my seating area just got an old wash tub there I think we used that for uh, water for pigs years ago and I used a pallet and made a table. I actually cut this off right past the point where its middle support is and then just used some 2x4s and basically made a box to sit it on and then screwed it to it. Actually somewhat worked perfect for 1020 stacked underneath it. So I can go straight to here. I can fill my flats, push the soil back into the bucket, which I keep it covered to keep it moist that way. I find that's best. Stuff's great. So from there, I am still doing my seating in another area. I might bring it over here. I'm still kind of debating. I'm still trying to play around with it. But here are my tables or lack of tables. They're a whole bunch of pallets. They're four by four all the way down the floor. I do not have enough blocks or other material to actually get them up off the ground right now. And I don't want to spend a bunch of money on it. Because I mainly did this with parts and pieces I already had. Kind of on a shoestring budget here, just trying to get this thing up and going. But either way, I mean, I'll turn you around here and show you what we got. So I really thought I had a lot of starts. Because this thing is 40 foot long. But I still actually have a lot of space left. So there's my Solanacea collection peppers and tomatoes got some broccolis and kales and then beets and kurabis and basils and dills and oh all kinds of stuff uh, cabbages and parsley and cilantro my big set of onions my different rounds of leaf lettuce and head lettuce then I've got the flower section down here which I just popped so really can't see too much right now 
but they're going. And then I have all that room and all of this room to work with. So that can definitely be for future expansions. So the main way I'm ventilating right now is just like Caterpillar Tunnel, bring it up on the sides. I do have a gas cylinder back here on this back window. Actually, during all the wind the other day, it popped the cotter key, which actually opens it up. The only problem I found with this is that it only opens it that far. I don't think that's quite far enough. I mean, I'm going to get airflow through, which would be the objective to get it open, and then the exhaust fan take it out. That way, if I'm not here, this tunnel won't overheat too much. But when I came in here the other day, it was pretty hot. That's actually why I painted all of this was because it was getting too hot on me too quick. All these pallets were black and I've got landscape fabric covering the whole entire floor so nothing will grow in here. It was also black. It was hot. I did not like it. About a gallon and a half paint painted all of this. I didn't paint it well but it's painted and now it's white and it's not as heat absorbing. It should be reflecting more heat hopefully. Um, I can also open it up on this side so I can cross ventilate. But, I mean, it's a pretty simple design. The one thing I do need to get out here is electricity and water. Right now I'm just running off extension cords. And uh, the water is coming through a hose, which I have over here, but I gotta go outside to turn it on and off, and that's just a pain in the butt. I mean, I, nobody likes doing that. I have water right over there. I just gotta dig in the line. Um, I will tell you, heating it, I've been using this little heater right here. It's a little diesel heater. Works great. Uh, haven't been out in really, really cold weather. I originally had it in the big high tunnel back over there since about March, keeping everything above freezing. And I've gone through, let's see, about a tank and a half on it. So that's roughly seven gallons of diesel in about a month. Granted, it hasn't gotten super cold. I'm only keeping it at 40. So when it gets down to 35, it kicks on and raises back up to 40. So I'm not heating, heating. But just for keeping things above freezing, it's working great. I don't have to worry about my starts. I don't have to worry about covering and bringing them in. So I think this is going to work out really well. The one thing I am going to do is this last section right here. I'll come from here to here, which is 10 feet. And I'm going to put a piece of shade cloth over this section. Like I might go pretty aggressive. I might actually go up to maybe a 90 or so. Because I really want this area to be comfortable to work in. And... By going 10 feet, I mean, granted, I'm going to get into my palletized area, but I have my carabiner hooks on both sides I can hook it to. I'm not even going to go all the way down. I'll probably start here and then go up. So probably, I don't know, maybe a 10 by 10 might be decent, or maybe 10 by 15, because this is 28 foot across. That gives me 10 feet, 5 feet each side. I don't know. I'll have to play with it. But I'll let you know when I do and kind of how it works. Um, just note, south is that way, so the sun comes from this side. So even if I shade it off, west is that way, I'm only going to be blocking the afternoon heat, which might actually shade off this and help it a little bit. So we'll see. Well, hope you all like what you saw today. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you all. Have a good day. And as always, head over to arkenburgfarms.com. Scroll down to the bottom, digital tools and training. Bunch of spread, spreadsheets in there. Bunch of cool stuff. Some free, some paid. Some more advanced, some simple. So check them out.